What did you think of the fish? Good. Did you like that, yeah. Charles? Yeah. You're going to have one more meal, too. Mm -hmm. Did she tell you that? Yeah. There's enough for another one yet. Yeah. One of the first fish pieces I had for a long time. Do you know where Martin's Lake is? Martin's Lake? That's where I got it. Over, uh, they used to call it Leech Lake. Over there by the racetrack. Oh. That little lake there oh. called Martin's Lake. Calvin Huey and uh, Raymond Huey and Stan Thompson live right there now. Yeah. yeah. That's where it came from. Yeah. Gee, I didn't think you'd get any that big in that lake. <laughs> you'd be surprised. A friend of mine got one eight pounds there. Eight pounds? That one that you had was about three. Mm hmm. Well, I got a letter from some people up at uh, Aspen Grove, Bryant's, they don't know if you know them or not. No. And uh, she was saying in the letter that they just stocked uh, Missoula Lake with 5,000 fish. Yeah. Yeah, well, they should. That's a good lake. Uh, good big lake. Yeah. But there's an awful lot of coarse fish in there. Uh, yes. Tench and squawfish and suckers and uh, red side chiners and stuff like that. That lake is loaded with those too. Yeah. Now let's go back to Myron. Okay. He, uh, Tell me about that incident where he signed all those checks. Oh, he, uh, well, I told you about it. He was going to Seattle. He had to go to Seattle for some reason. And uh, he had a crew of 12 men, I think it was 10 or 12 men working for him. And uh, he didn't know when he'd be back, so he just wrote out, signed checks, and let this other fellow finish him off. He trusted him? Yeah. Yeah. And he told me, he says he could send, now this old Mexican, he was an awful boozer. Mm -hmm. He says he could send him down, give him $10 or something, and send him down with a load of hay or a load of beef. Or, mm -hmm. And he always came back with the exact change. Mm. So he, he had a lot of uh, faithfulness to his, uh, his boss, Myron, then, too. Yeah. Huh? yeah. Well, that's that, that respect, you know, that's there, that means a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So, you were going to tell me something else about Myron, though, too. Well, him and my dad uh, worked together in placer mining for a while. Placer mining, oh, yeah? yeah? Yeah. On Copper Creek or Gold Creek or Granite or? Uh, Granite. Granite Creek, yeah. Yeah. Granite and Tullamine River. Yeah. Mm hmm Did they do any good? No. They were chasing a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like a fella. He struck a pocket of gold in the rock. In the, uh, it was all the, the, the information, the, uh, what do you call it, the lava. And Basalt? And... Uh, Quartz? Yeah. Quartz? Quartz. Yeah. That's an indication of gold, right, I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, he uh, he made big money out of it for a while. And then he, somebody come along and offered him 20000 for it. Yeah. Oh, well, I said he hadn't played in, in no time. Yeah. And back up and he blew the whole damn thing out. <laughs> yeah. Blew that whole pocket out. So he, he should have sold it. Yeah. He, he used up his pocket of gold right now. Yeah. He'd have been way ahead to grab the 20000 and run, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Did you ever find any nuggets of any size when you were a kid? I never tried it. You never even tried it? Huh? No. Oh, oh I went out once or twice and, and then they found one nugget. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And the little one. 
but uh, I've seen a nugget. It was flat, but had two fingers, but it was flat, mm -hmm. and uh, it was. Uh, I forget how much. It was. I couldn't tell you. Something like three ounces, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Somebody said they found one. Is there a sheep creek coming into Tulamine Lake there? Wild sheep creek or no? Near uh, Scotts? You know where Scotts live up on the hill? Yeah. There's a creek this side of that? Yeah. Somebody said they pulled a nugget out of there that weighed some number of pounds, like four or five mm -hmm. pounds. Yeah, mm -hmm. like that. You never heard of that, huh? No. Oh. That's another one of those tales. Yeah. They get bigger. Yeah. Fish and gold nuggets get bigger with age. <laughs> yeah. And they grow faster out of the ground in the water than they do in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, oh, it's a beautiful day today. Gorgeous yeah. day today. I haven't been out today at all. It's, yeah. it's windy out. Did you shoot those crows that were giving you a rough time? No, they haven't been giving me anymore. They haven't? Oh. No, they were just the odd one around. Yeah, yeah. But that one morning, that day, it was hell of a <laughs> They must have found some feed out uh, yeah. under the tree yeah. and yeah. all congregated there. Right. I guess I talked to Nora since I last saw you. Ah, sure, sure I did. Yeah. They're living in a trailer behind the old house. Remember the log house they had? Mm -hmm. Right on uh, Otter Avenue there. Mm -hmm. Now they're living in a trailer house behind that house, that log house. Mm -hmm. And her sister lives right across the street there. Her sister, which one is that? Good grief! She had about six or eight of them sisters. What was it now? You remember that yeah. family was twelve. Yeah, I know. They're, they're even dozen. Yeah. Cheaper by the dozen. <laughs> <laughs> what was her sister's name? Well. It's starting at the top of us, Mary, Effie, Bridget, and then Nora, and uh, uh, Leona, and Liza, hmm. and I don't remember the last two. I think it must be one of the last two. Yeah. Her younger sister, yeah. This sister moved up to Alberta for a while, up around High Prairie or somewhere. Mm -hmm. She was up there for a while. That'd be Kitty. Hmm? Kitty. Kitty, yeah. Kitty is the one, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the one that lives across the street from her now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got a good memory. you got a good memory for that family. Yeah. Yeah. There was Tom. Mickey was the oldest. Boy. Yeah. Mickey and... And Tom. Tom, yeah. Dan and Patty. And Patty, yeah. Four boys. Yeah. And eight girls. Yeah. Trudy was very uh, happy when she heard you talking about the dances. Yeah. You remember you told me about the dances? You used yeah. to go to down there at the ranch. Yeah. She was very happy about that, that, she, that you enjoyed those. Yeah. I go to a dance now, but all I could do is a big college square dance. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get up to dance anymore. Did you ever play any instrument? No. No. No, no I got a violin one time. And I took lessons oh, for maybe a month or so, uh -huh. and I gave it up. Uh -huh. It wasn't your... No. Instrument, huh? No. In fact, I uh, won it as a prize. <laughs> you won the violin for yeah. what? At school? No. Oh? Salesman. Oh, you were a salesman? Well, I, uh, when I was a kid, I used to go around selling. My mother had a uh, 
laundry. I used to go around shining and blueing. Oh, blueing, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You must have sold a lot of bluing. Yes, I did. And they gave you a violin for selling the most bluing. Yeah. Hmm. And I had that violin go for years and years. I never took it down. And I had to give it away to get up there. And McDermott boys. One of the what boys? McDermott's. McDermott's, oh yeah, yeah. They're still up in that valley, you know. McDermott's? Sure, yeah. Bruce died a while back ago. Bruce McDermott. But uh, Neil still lives up there. Well, that's a different family. Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, okay. Oh. I'm going to shut that door over there. Were you ever involved with a forest fire by any chance? Oh, yes. Can you think of anything that would be interesting along those lines? Forest fire? Well, I had a fire one time. And uh, I got it out, which never is. And the uh, wind came up and alongside the, alongside the road and the mountain there. And, uh, up on the mountain and I went, I had it all corralled, excepting it, oh, maybe 50 or 100 feet, and there was a big pine tree that caught fire, mm -hmm. and I wanted to get down with it before the tree fell, and I didn't, the tree caught me. But I, just as the tree broke, I jumped. Mm -hmm. And while I was in the air jumping, it hit me. Oh, so it didn't hurt you as bad as it could have? No. You weren't solid to the ground? No. So you just sort of bounced off like a baseball, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Did it hurt you bad? Oh, it hurt me for a while. It got over it pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Well, the only thing that I've ever had that really bothered me is my knee. I uh, was working on the Georgia Towers and I stepped on a form tie and there was water in that. Concrete? Concrete. Yeah. And about two inches of water blowing and no, no windows in yet. And I didn't want to let, didn't want to fall in the water and I finally wound up in the water. A damn tie, uh, tie boat. It kept a rolling and I couldn't get my feet out of my quick enough. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like you were on a ball bearing. Yeah. Yeah. And, well, I was off for three months with it. And uh, I had two doctors, and they both told me that as I got older, it would come back on me. Did it? Yeah. They were right, huh? Yeah. How did those guys know so much? Hmm? Have you ever wondered how a doctor knows so much? They really seem to know a lot. Yes. You know? and Even a young doctor seems to know what a person's going to expect later on, you know? How do, how do they know so much? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, uh, I forget what I'd done. I'd, oh, yes, I had thyroids. Mm -hmm. I went to seven different doctors and they all told me it was my heart. <laughs> and, uh, so this young fellow came in and I had a cold and I went up to him and got some stuff from the doctors. And he told me to just come back in a week's time and he said, I'm going to see you. So I didn't bother. Mother, uh, mother, mother, she says, you're going to stay home today. I'm going up to see the doctor. So uh, she went up to 
seen her and said, you send that fellow to the hospital right away. Get a bed where you can burn now. So I went up, I went in, I said, how long do you expect me to be in dock? Oh, it said, maybe 10, 12 days. And I was in for over a month. And I went to him afterwards. I better go and pay him two dollars. And I said, I thought you told me I'd only be in there week for ten days. And he says, that's all we expected you to live. No kidding. That was a young doctor out of the Navy. Yeah. You only expected to live that long. Yeah. And here you are now. Yeah. <laughs> well, he didn't know too much there, did he? <laughs> But I guess maybe you had an iron constitution. Yes. A very good uh, condition to your body, huh? Yeah. And you pulled through. Yeah. Huh. I've had uh, troubles here. Yeah, I see. You had them all over me. Mm -hmm. And I know them well. Old Doc McPhail, mm -hmm. he used to be from Princeton to Nicola, right horseback. And if he'd, if he'd have been around there, this wouldn't have happened. He'd have given me some stuff or something. Mm -hmm. Doc McPhail? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I guess they came to your house by horseback in those days. Yeah. No matter what. Yeah. They had to be in pretty good shape too, those well, old they, doctors, huh? Yeah. Because they'd be exposed to illnesses all the time, right? Yeah. Disease. They'd be exposed to that. And then they'd have to do all that rugged traveling through the woods and, and the rain and snow yeah. and you name it. They had yeah. to do it, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, there was an old doctor here in Princeton, uh, McCaffrey. He was an old, he was an old brother. <laughs> and her, his wife got on the pressure shop. So he went down on the cavern. Yeah. The cavern came up. Well, she was, she was out right there, it doesn't matter what they were doing. She was just twins and they're fighting. They're fighting? Yeah. She was carrying twins? Yeah. For sure. <laughs> they were fighting inside her, yeah. Yeah, and she fell down. <laughs> yeah. well, he, an awful man. he was an awful man. Yeah. Why? Well, he didn't give it that much to you. Oh, he was pretty blunt, huh? He was very blunt. Oh. There was a woman here in Princeton. She uh, was quite a bike rider. Mm -hmm. And she had a little dog named Fluffy. So she went to, with no vet, no vet around, she went to, to the McCaffrey. Brought and Fluffy? And no, she left him home. Oh. And uh, she had no doctors, and that Fluffy was losing all her hair. Well, I said, I tell you, said, you quit riding your bike. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Th that's terrible, Henry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was, he was a pretty good doctor, too. He knew his business, huh? Yeah. He was the one that built that cabin out there at McCaffrey Lake. Yeah. On the south end. And he put up a weir and stuff. He was going to try to keep the the uh, squawfish and stuff out of McCaffrey yeah. Lake. Yeah. He took on a personal war against all his <laughs> quaffish. Do you remember anything else about him? Didn't he go out there to get away from the town? Sort of like... Oh, I don't know about that. Just sort of, could you get away for a while? He'd yeah. go out there, you know? Because the doctor has a pretty strenuous life. So. Yeah, he has. So I... Well, that's the old Doc McPhail. He was an old Scotchman. And uh, he... Uh, he got himself with an axe in the cabin of the lake. Mm -hmm. 
Did the man put salt on it? Yeah. And wrapped it up? Yeah. What happened then? Healed. It healed? Yeah. Boy, it hurt like the devil too, I'll <laughs> bet. Gee. Salt in the wounds. Yeah. Mm. Wouldn't he need it stitched? Well, there's no way of getting it stitched. He was too far away? Yeah, he was over 50 miles away. Did he still have his accent? Yeah. Yeah. That brogue? Yeah. Yeah, that really good. Yeah. Both him and his younger brother could tell that way when you hear him talking, they were Scotch. Mm -hmm. What did his younger brother do? What was he? Well, he uh, drowned on one of the ferries he fell overboard. Oh, no. And then who? Oh. Did you know there's two Scotch doctors here now? No. Reed and Reed. Oh. Dr. David Reed and Dr. Douglas Reed. Those are the youngest. Douglas. Douglas. Yeah, they're here now. So we got two Scotsmen back here now. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had a doctor here. I forget his name. And, uh, he was a good doctor, too. And he quit and went back to Scotland. And he came back and he found a given the uh, person in the hospital to look after it. Yeah. I guess he must have been a good doctor, huh? Yeah. yeah. Darn good to get that responsibility. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever have to get stitches? Yeah, finger. This one? Yeah. Yeah. Your first uh, finger on finger. your left hand, yeah? Yeah. I had 24 stitches in there. What did you do to that? Cut it in a saw. What kind of a saw? A buzz saw. A buzz saw? Cutting firewood? No, I was making some, I was doing some fancy woodwork. Mm-hmm. A table saw. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Twenty-four stitches. Yeah. Yeah. And the mom laid them here, right up to the middle there. Huh. And, and they still won't straighten up. Huh. And the thumb, the thumb too, it's no more then. Uh-huh. This thing was a little numb, too. Huh. I have trouble in lacing my shoes. Yeah, yeah. You're going to have to get some boot hooks. <laughs> yeah, button hooks, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, with those buttons on it? Yeah. <laughs> did you ever wear those? Yeah. You did? Did you have to use a button hook to get them shut, too? Oh, yes. Yeah. Huh. And they probably took them away from me when I joined the army. They did? <laughs> yeah. Where were you in the army? Where were you stationed? In Vancouver. Oh, you never had to go overseas? No. Good. Good. First World War or second? First. Yeah. Thank goodness you didn't have to go. You joined late, huh? Yeah. Yeah. What were you in? Infantry? Infantry, yes. They looked at your flat feet and said, he's infantry, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have flat feet, do you? No. Yeah. Why wouldn't they put you in the horse soldiers? Cavalry. I don't know. Well, they always say they put you in the opposite thing no matter what anyway. Yeah. Just to keep you loose. If you're a good mechanic, they make a cook out of you. Yeah. If you're a good cook, they make a mechanic out of you. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like the army? No, I didn't like it. I wouldn't think you would, not not growing up where you did know. No. With all the freedom you had. Yeah. And when the war was over, 
I was up on the ranch. And there was a boat coming in, and I went down to the uh, exactly to be in Vancouver. And uh, it was a, well, it was a hell of a crowd around. Well, she'd have one thing with her, no person to her. Mm. So, I mean, Coming back? No. Oh. She was just down there. Yeah? Watching the boat come in, too? Yeah. Huh. Remember his name? Oh, Jim Kelly. Jim Kelly. Is that what Kelly Hill's named after? Kelly Mountain, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Kelly Mountain, yeah. yeah. It's quite easy to get up on one side of it. It's never going to go down. <laughs> no, it's just Kelly. He uh, fell and broke his ribs. And it was, oh, he was about 25 miles from Hudson. I told him he. Mm -hmm. And uh, he only had about seven miles over to the railroad. He decided to. Go across Broken Ridge and um, went to Vancouver. He made it. Well, he was on them tough old cottages. Did you ever know a man by the name of Venevold? Venable. Venevold? Maybe I asked you that before. Art? Venevold. No? Doesn't ring a bell, huh? No. No. <coughs> but uh, there's a woman in here, she's married now to uh, Ellie. And she was a Venable. Oh, she was a Venable. Huh. That doesn't quite fit with art. Art came over from Norway and he worked for the CPR oh. with uh, Les Fripp. Some of those guys that worked on the Coquihalla on the railroad there on the section. And then when Art Venable retired from the railroad, he returned to Norway. Oh, no, well, mm -hmm. the same, not the same family, no. No. Yeah. No, that's true. He was quite the boy. He was full of bullshit. <laughs> he was a trapper for a great part of his life. Yeah. And I believe he was a pretty good trapper. He made a living on it, yeah. yeah. Nora tells me about the time that uh, Les was coming to one of those dances. I guess it was at the Tulumeen Hall there. Yeah. Or the hotel or something. You remember the old hotel there, Tulumeen? Yeah. Well, he was coming to one of those dances. And so on the way in, he decided to look at a couple of traps. Sure enough, he had two coyotes. So he killed them. And he came into the, the dance hall with these two coyotes <laughs> over his shoulder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I remember a dance we had in Tulumeen in the hall. And old man, she got tight. He climbed on his horse and he went through one door and out the other. <laughs> <laughs> right through the dance floor, right yeah. across the dance floor, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Macintosh, what did he do? What was he, another rancher? No, he was a logger. Logger, well. So that scattered a few dancers off the floor for a little while, huh? <laughs> they flurried out of there like uh, grouse, huh? Yeah. Got out of the way. Did anybody ever make any moonshine up in that country? Well... Old stump blower, they used to call it. <laughs> Old stump blower, or uh, white lightning. Yeah, there was a couple of Swedes made some. They did make a few, huh? Yeah. Was it any good? I don't know. I didn't taste it. You didn't? No. You weren't a drinker? No. Yeah. 
The only vice I can see is you chew once in a while. Yeah. Copenhagen? Yeah. You like Copenhagen, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll keep you from getting tapeworms, you know. Oh, really, really. <laughs> yeah. They used to feed it to the horses when they when they uh, when they figured a horse had worms. Yeah. They'd stuff some of that. You know, you probably know about that. They yeah. stuff some of that down and kill the worms. Yeah. Give it to them in their ropes. That's really going through the snooze. <laughs> <Sure is>. <laughs> <laughs> Two. <b> <coughs> Two bucks in a day. What did you have to pay for it then? Well, I 15 cents or 20 cents a box. Is that right? Yeah. How long would a box last you? Oh, a week, yeah. And he went through two a day. His teeth must have been just brown, huh? <laughs> like the funny thing the doctor told me when I had my teeth out. Mm -hmm. He told me, he says, you just sat in chewing that stuff when you was about 17. He says, you had all your teeth. You'd still have them? Yeah. Huh. Is that one of the dentists around here? Dentist in uh, dentist. Oh, he figured it keeps teeth. Yeah. No, it's in Vancouver. Did you ever accidentally swallow your cud when you were chewing it? No. Somebody slapped you on the back or something, and you no. swallow your whole wad of chewing tobacco. Maybe you can remember this. My uncle used to buy, my great uncle used to buy chewing tobacco and it was in a, uh, a plug. Mm -hmm. It looked like a piece of board. Yeah. And he had a knife yeah. and he'd whittle off a chunk of that stuff and tuck it in his mouth, you know. Yeah. That was the rottenest look of <laughs> You remember that stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. I don't know how he stood it. No, I was, uh, and the three of us got together one fall and said nothing doing, so we decided we had a bunch of timber and go logging. Mm -hmm. And there was a young fella and the old man and himself. And we just formed a big hole. About a two footer or three footer? Yeah. yeah. And the old man, he comes in with a team, he was hitting first. Yeah. And he hops up on the log and says, Ah, you young fellow, you can't shoot, you can't log, don't you shoot? Mm -hmm. He pulls it out and takes a big chew. I say, Hey, come on, I just pull it over here. So he gave me a chew. Mm -hmm. He got everything in a circle to the log. Is that right? You were spinning, huh? Yeah. Oh, that stuff's strong, huh? That's how you got started. No. Oh, had you chewed before? No. Oh. oh. No, but I never tried chewing to do that again. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's strong stuff. Never forget my great uncle Gordon had a, a knife and one blade had been sharpened so much, you know. Mm -hmm. That was his tobacco blade, you know, for cutting off. That it was hardly anything left of it. It was just, you know, about half the width it should have been. Mm -hmm. The blade was so small. And, yeah. I always liked to use his tools. He kept everything razor sharp. All his tools were yeah, really I, nice. I always kept my tools in good shape. Yeah. I don't know how they are now. The boys get them done much more. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I, uh, well, I well, you used to go and buy them now, you pay maybe $2,000. Mm -hmm. And uh, in, in Ottawa, he, he did a good job. Traveled all over the world. Your son? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, he uh, took writing for the Thompson's stories. What are your son's names? Fred and Wade. Fred and Wade, yeah. Mm -hmm. In Ottawa, Did either of them like carpentry? Did either of them show a talent towards uh, doing woodworking? Oh, not really, no. no. But they just inherited your tools. Yeah. Yeah. You want to know something? I've got a tool. Someday you're going to have to come over and visit me at my house. I've got all this stuff over there you might be interested in. 
But I, uh, when I went back to Norway to the old homestead, yeah. I went in there and I looked around, looked around. And I asked my cousins over there, I said, is there any kind of tool that uh, I could have, you know? Any old fashioned tool that I could have just as a souvenir? That, you know? And I got a wooden plane. It was yeah. about this long, yeah. like a, a square. And there's a slot cut in the bottom. Yeah. And the blade was put in and a wooden wedge held yeah. it in place. I had two or three of them. You had two or three of those, yeah. 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 And, and on the side in the wood, my great great grandfather had r burned his name with hot a uh, hot uh, press, you know, yeah. that had his name in it, and so that he could. I guess all their tools were wood, and that's the way they identified yeah. him, you know. No, the uh, I thought when he uh, was prospecting his own. Actually, they work quite nice. Oh, I guess. Sure, they work just as good as the metal ones. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah. But the only thing is, it's a real trick to adjust the blade. You know, mm -hmm. when you put that wedge in? Yeah. For me, it's a real trick. Because you drive the wedge in and it changes the depth of the cut. Yeah. So you have to set it back a little ways where you figure it's going to end up, you know, when you put the wedge yeah. in. Yeah. Well, the way I do it, I just put the blade in and put the wedge right in top and shove it down so I just put it in top of that. Mm -hmm. And it'd be right. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> and if you want to loosen the blade, just take a hammer and hit it on the front end and everything will come apart. The block of wood? The block, yeah, yeah. yeah. You hit the front of the plane. Yeah. On the wood there. Yeah. And that jarred everything loose. Yeah. Huh. You use a metal hammer? Yeah. Or a wooden hammer? Metal hammer. Metal hammer, huh? You just had to give it a light tap. I'll have to remember that. I wondered how you got it out. Yeah. <laughs> I figured you had to grab it with a big pair of pliers or something and twist and shake it and like an old terrier dog grabs a rat. Mm -hmm. When we were tearing down Mrs. Hamilton's old second-hand store down here, remember her? Mrs. Hamilton had that old second-hand store yeah. on Main Street here, Bridge Street. Yeah. We were tearing that down, and I found two uh, heads for axes. Real long, narrow, double-bit falling axes. You know, gee, they're good. Yeah. I put handles on those. I wouldn't trade those for any new axe I could get. No. Really hold an edge nice, balanced well. Yeah. No, one time I was working in Vancouver and uh, I said, I'm going to take it home and let it. And there was no lower region there, was he? He said, I'll get you to take my saw too. He says, yeah, it's your dip. Uh, I'll give you a file for it. And uh, it was, you seen them in three quarters, three quarters of files. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, instead of it being, it was just like that. One one side was, on the top it was the, and then, and then I saw with that, and that cut your teeth right down. 
It worked well? Oh, I guess. Where do you suppose he got that file? He got it from Norway. Oh. And you treasured that file, huh? Yeah. And when it wore out, you were a little unhappy, I guess, huh? I know. I not like that. But that was the best file you ever saw, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I found some pretty in, in different tools over in Norway when I was there. You know, they do things just a wee bit different sometimes, you know, and they mm -hmm. use different different techniques. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, are they much for power tools over there now? Oh, yeah, now they are, yeah. 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 Okay. But they're not as rich a country as Canada as mm -hmm. far as... Uh, like my cousin's carpenter shop wasn't uh, nearly as well equipped as mine, for example. But, mm -hmm. but then uh, they don't put a lot, a whole lot of uh, value and money. The Norwegians. No. I think they're more. They're friends. Uh, family. Is, family. This guy. Yeah, you did that with a saw, right? Yeah. With it's a. Good saw. Yeah, when you're cutting some metal or something. No, I have just got a hole in the roof or a chimney. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it hopped back, huh? Keep back. Yeah. Oh, gee. Mm -hmm. Well, we all have our little scars, Henry. See that? Finger? I can't yeah. straighten it out anymore. I used to do some trapping when I was a kid. Did I tell you about that? And I was feeling around in the snow for my trap, and I found it. <laughs> <laughs> It whopped my knuckles so bad it just blew it up. It was just shattered. I saw the x-ray. Yeah. Little pieces of bone all over in there. You know. It just went whoop, like that. Just. I sure found that trap. I had a lot more sympathy for the animals after that. <laughs> Well, about the only animal that I haven't had any use for much is a bear. Mm. They, uh, there was no grizzly come along one time and he killed a cow of mine. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the rest of the bear, they... they gathered them. around. Yeah. Grizzly just take one feed and go. Mm -hmm. And they let the rest. For the others, yeah. And the others, and they get the taste of it. And yeah. I guess they... There went your year's profit, huh? Yeah. So much for anything in the bank at the end of that year. Oh. <coughs> were there any elk in this country when you were a kid? No. No elk, yeah. They were they were brought in later, weren't they? Yes, but there had been elk in previous to that. Oh, yeah. It had been the winter but uh, the snow didn't go until it ended up. Mm -hmm. Snow all winter long, all summer long. A whole year? Mm -hmm. Snow year round? Mm -hmm. What year would that have been? Oh, but I don't know. Oh, about, you know. Uh, the early 1800s. Oh. You weren't around here? No, no. <laughs> no, it was before my time. Yeah. No, it was, uh, my father was telling me, he, uh, there was an old Indian who was telling him about it. Mm -hmm. There had been a couple of elk ones found. Mm -hmm. They, they started them all out. They didn't understand everything else. Mm -hmm. Gee. Year, a year around of snow. Yeah. Gosh. Did you ever go to uh, see any of the Indian camps, or were they around when you were here, or was that in the past? Like they used to say that they uh, gathered at Tulamine there. Yeah. And the women went berry picking or something? Yeah. And the men went hunting? Paradise Valley or something like that? Mm -hmm. Did you ever see any of those at camps uh, or anything like that? Or was that before your time too? Never really before my time. Mm -hmm. But uh, there was no cabin there. It was 
I remember it was just a mound of dirt. Mm-hmm. And the railroad someday went through that. Green. Mm-hmm. We found some bones in there. It was a, bur- a burial ground, huh? Yeah. yeah. Did you ever find an arrowhead? No. I never did either. That's something I love. I'd rather find an arrowhead than a four-leaf clover. Yeah. Anytime, yeah. wonder where, where would you look for them around here if you wanted to find an arrowhead? Well, uh, go up uh, to the main road and just for the you have to get past Tolkien and go on up the Mac Road. Mm. The one that comes out at Aspen Grove? Yeah. Right there, yeah. Or a little south of Aspen Grove. Yeah. You'd go up that road, yeah. Mm. Up by your ranch? Yeah, just before. Well, it was just before our ranch. Yeah? Down by the river there? Yeah, there's a fellow in there. It uh, used to find lots of arrowheads. Mm hmm. They claimed that there must have been war there, Indian war at one time. Mm-hmm. You remember what his name was that he said? Uh, Hart. Hart. I know him. He was a rancher. He was a rancher at the Red Cardinal, up there by uh, Gladstone Lake, back in. Wasn't that the man, Hart? No, that was a different fellow. Oh. I thought I knew somebody you knew. <laughs> well, that's the way it goes. Yeah. Well, I can remember back to uh, winter of 1901, 1902. Say, is it true that they were harder winters then than they are now? They were harder. They were longer or what? More snow or? More snow. More snow. Were they colder or just more snow? Well, they weren't any colder, I don't think. Yeah? They were more snow. Well, why why is it now that we don't have so much snow? Well, you tell me. Yeah, I don't know. Can't figure that out. Now this this is the second much we've had to no snow here. I yeah, think. yeah. I know it. And uh, one year, oh, when we moved back from Vancouver, we bought the place where you know, there was an old schoolhouse, and we bought it. And you couldn't see the fence posts. They were buried. Right under, yeah. Yeah, that was in the late forties. Hmm. No, but we had one winter. It was winter of nineteen one, nineteen two. The uh, stage came through from Nicola to Princeton on wheels all winter long. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, yeah. on wheels. Yeah. And then next year, yeah, really paid for it. 1903, huh? Yeah, 1903. Yeah, yeah. Boy, I'll bet you did. They had to put snowshoes on the horses, huh? And <laughs> <laughs> the horses stayed in the barn. They did. They didn't even take them out, huh? No. The only thing was I, I was on the ranch and had a good big horse. And the gentleman I took him, I took him and drove a trail down to the creek for the cattle to go bottom for, for water. Mm-hmm. Did you have enough hay to last through? Yeah. Lucky, huh? Well, I'll tell you what, 
The Perlins are having a lot of fun out there with coyotes on their ranch at Rabbit Mountain, you know, up there on the way to the Coquihalla. They're about uh, know, they're five big. miles, four or five miles due west of uh, Tulumine, yeah, yeah, on uh, Lawless Creek Road. Yeah. Yeah. You know where they live. Yeah. They're having a devil of a time with coyotes up there. Hmm. They're taking their geese and their ducks and stuff like that. Trudy's got her 30-30 behind the door and every once in a while she <laughs> blasts 30-30 <laughs> isn't much good on coyote swords. Oh, but yes. you got to be fairly close to a coyote. Though. No, not really 30-30. Oh? I've seen a fella shoot a coyote and they were usually half a mile away. With a 30-30? Yeah. Huh. Really? You can just play the whole thing. Yeah? The old coyote disappeared in a puff of hair, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The trouble with a coyote is there's so much around them. It's hair. Yeah. There's not much body inside that no. fluffy old mass of hair. Yeah. Well, I never forget the time when I was helping your neighbor. And the father, he had a gun. I was running across the field and he said, I'd get him. He shot him. Shot the guy with the tail off. <laughs> <laughs> the tail dropped right to the ground. Yeah. Oh, no. Because <laughs> that guy would get out of there in a hurry. I'll bet you. He had a cold winter, too. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if a coyote could survive without its tail. I don't know. You know, they use their tail sort of like when they're chasing stuff. Yeah. They throw it one way or the other to counterbalance their, their turns and such. Yeah. I wonder how a coyote would do <laughs> without a tail. When I was about uh, 17, we went squirrel hunt. Uh, this is in Minnesota. They have big gray squirrels. Mm -hmm. You've seen them in Stanley Park, maybe. Yeah. Great big gray squirrels. And there was one up there chattering away like mad. And my friend Norman was an excellent shot. So he leaned against the old post, you know, crack, and the tail came down off. <laughs> he did it on purpose. He shot the tail. That squirrel just about had a fit. <laughs> oh, was he mad? <laughs> he was chattering and cussing us out every which way. <laughs> I think that would be disastrous for a squirrel, you know. Yeah. With no tail, that, that would do it. Well, they uh, wrap themselves up in the tail of the moon kind of when they go to bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, real important. Yeah. Ever tried to eat one of those little red squirrels? No. Oh gee, it's just like eating a pine cone. Yeah. They're all full of pine needles and yeah. pitch and turpentine and it smells yeah. like you're cleaning a paintbrush when you're <laughs> cooking one. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. You you'd swear that the pot's full of tar uh, turpentine in there, you know, when you're cooking one. I'd have to be pretty desperate to eat those. Yeah. Did you ever get lost and have to go for a while without eating? No. no. Yeah, you didn't miss many meals, huh? No. That's pretty good. One time a friend and I got out and we got caught in a rainstorm. And we were riding our bikes. And we wondered how the devil we were going to get back. Just pouring rain. So we took cover underneath a bridge. And I, we were out fishing, so I had my rod there. So it was just pouring rain, so I thought, well, I might as well fish, you know. Usually under a bridge it's pretty good, you know, for catching fish. For some reason they like it under bridges. So we were underneath, and I caught a fish, oh, six inches long, a little trout. And here we were, two 17-year-old boys, <laughs> looking at that trout. <laughs> 
Well, we built a little fire with some driftwood that was there and cooked that trout on a stick like you would a hot dog. And then we split it, and we each had half of that trout. <laughs> Seventeen-year-old boys, you could fill our plates normally four times with potatoes and we could yeah. eat them. And we had a half a six-inch trout <laughs> each. <laughs> munch, munch, and it was gone. <laughs> but that is the best trout I've ever eaten. Yeah. That stands out in my mind as being the best trout I ever had. Although I didn't see it very long. <laughs> they say these gray squirrels are pretty good eating. They are. The gray squirrel is, yeah. And he's got a big cousin called a fox squirrel. Yeah. And he's two, two times as big as a gray squirrel. I shot a few of those. When they come down out of the tree, Sounds like a rabbit's hitting the ground. They're two, two and a quarter pounds each, those, those big fox squirrels. And if they've been feeding in a cornfield, you have got some good eating. Yeah. Yeah, they're real good. One of the best meals I ever ate was at this friend's place. And we had uh, two cocktail rabbits, a pheasant or two, and we had a mess, six or eight gray squirrels, maybe a fox squirrel in among the six or eight. Boy, that was good. Mm -hmm. She knew how to cook wild game, too. Yeah, She'd yeah. been raised. She, Yeah, she knew what she was doing. <clears throat> yeah. They were so juicy, Henry. Oh, gee, they were good. They just... Well, really good. Going back to Nora's aunt. They lived down probably, have you heard of Bromley's? Down by Bromley Rock? Yeah. Yeah. And what was their name? Bromley. Oh, okay. Yeah. And uh, they had a feed there one time. And she uh, took up some wild game. They, uh, oh, they just cleaned it up. And, you know, and I was going up. And she said, Do you know what kind of meat you had? And I said, No. The bear meat. She just did all came up. <laughs> Bear meat. Yeah. It just and you would have enjoyed it and never thought a thing about it. No. But she mentioned bear. Yeah. And you upchucked it all. Yeah. No, I like bear meat. Why did that bother you then, I wonder? It didn't bother me. I wasn't there. Oh, somebody else upchucked it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> She should have waited a day or two. <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's do it now. Oh, he's retired, you know. I think he's about 82. 83, maybe. I guess he is young. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Les is a, uh, uh, he loves music. He really likes classical music. He spends a lot of time listening to records, symphonies. He's got a big pile of them. But he's, uh, <clears throat> I guess he's got arthritis a bit too. We went fishing last fall, he and I, yeah. up to Johnny Lake. You know where Johnny Lake is? No. Uh, do you know where Goose Lake is? Yeah. Okay, Johnny Lake is this side of Goose Lake. Oh. It may not have even been named or had fish in it when you were a kid. It's just a small lake that sits right on the top there in the mountain there. You go up, uh, you go up, well, you go beyond your old ranch there. Oh, yes, quite a ways. Yeah, and then you turn right and cross the railroad tracks and climb the hill. Yeah. And Johnny Lake is the first one on the right, first lake on the right as you climb that hill. He and I went up there and uh, we went fishing. We got about, oh, I think we got a limit. I think we got eight trout. They were hitting my old halfback nymphs.